Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to show you how to use a scan tool. Now behind me I've got my dad's pickup truck that he uses for work and he's got a check engine light. Now today I'm going to show you how to use this, hook it up to your car and try and distinguish what your problem is. All right. So one of these scan tools right here is going to give you a good idea as to where the issue in your car is. Now it's not going to tell you 100% what the problem is, but it's going to give you an error. That error is essentially going to give you a clue as to where the problem in your car is. So say you have an oxygen sensor code. It comes up and you read it on your computer. This is not going to strictly say that, hey, you need to replace your oxygen sensor. You're only using this to give you a better idea as to where the issue is. So if it's in an O2 sensor problem, you would then go under the car and take a look at the O2 sensors. See if everything's working properly and see if anything needs to be fixed. Go from there and once it's fixed, that light should actually turn off on its own. So my dad does have a code on his computer and I'm going to show you guys today how to hook it up to the car and how to read it. So I've got right here in my hands an Autolink Autel AL519. Now it's a scanner you can pick up for less than 100 bucks. I'll throw a link in the description for it. You guys can check out exactly what I'm using, pick one up. And this thing has actually been very handy. You can use it on basically any car. This scanner right here, it can be updated. It's got a port up top that hooks up to the car. And it can work for not only your engine problems, but also transmission. If you have an airbag or brake code, this will not solve that problem. But for less than 100 bucks, this scanner will be able to take care of 90% of the issues that you have in your car. So to hook this up, you've got to get the included cable that comes with, attach it to the top, screw it in, and then you've got to hook up the other end into the car. And it hooks up to your OBD2 port. So it's onboard diagnostics. Now not every car is the same, so that means that the OBD2 port that hooks up to your car could be not only underneath the driver's side, but I've also seen it on the passenger side of vehicles. 95% of the time it's somewhere under here, maybe under a latch on the side, maybe under the dash right here, but I'll show you exactly where it is on a couple cars. So, so if you come in the driver's seat, come underneath, you'll be able to find the port. Now it's usually somewhere underneath here. So on my car, it's tucked up in the corner like this up here. However, for the Sierra that I'm working on, the OBD2 port is right here. So it's a little connector that's underneath here, and all of the computer's inputs from your car, everything is going to be going in through this port. So it just goes in right there, and it clicks right up. So for my car, my port is underneath the driver's side as well. No, I'm in the garage right now, but it's a, little, it's a little dark. My sensor, my thing is right there. So you hook up the OBD2 port right up to that little connector. This will talk to the computers that are on board your car, and you'll get that relayed back to your little scan tool. As soon as I plug it in, this thing should turn on, and it will give you power. So what we have here is all of our options when you turn it on. So right here, OBD2. So it's onboard diagnostics. We're going to click that, because that's the issue that we have with our car. So it's going to read some computer outputs, and it's going to relay them into here. Takes a couple seconds. So, codes found. We've got one code that we have to look at. So, down here we'll press OK. Erase previously stored data, yes. Look at that control module. Read codes. The stored codes. Nothing. Okay, so if we look in the other module, right here, let's see if we have any codes in this one. There you go. So that is your that is the code that we have right now. So it's P0455. So P means it's a powertrain code, so that means it's something with your engine. And because up top, up top here, see how it says one of one? So you've only got one code. If you had another one, you just click down on here and cycle through. This means that we have a leak somewhere in our gas system. Now usually when it's leak detected, large leak, that usually means you either have a leak somewhere in the lines or you have a problem with your gas cap. So once you find out what your code is, so write that down, P0455, and then you're going to go online to obdcodes.com. Now it's going to show you basically what the issue is and what common symptoms are of, the, uh, of this code. So right here it says, a loose or improperly fixed gas cap, non-conforming gas cap, or another leak or large damaged piece in the EVAP system. So that means you have a big leak somewhere. Now nine times out of ten, it's usually the gas cap. So, go back behind here, make sure it's properly tightened. Can you see this, see how it's moving? That is not adequate enough. That does not look like it's going to get a good seal. That is loose. 
go to your parts store and get a new gas cap for your car. Now, not every one is the same. Replace this one right here with a new one that perfectly seals this area. Because there's a leak, that coat is coming up. So if you look in here, if you look on the outside ring, that little, this little part right here should make a perfect seal around here. But because it's not, even when you click it, because it's not making a perfect seal, the engine light is coming on and it's giving us that coat. The scanner that we used inside did not say, hey, go to your gas tank, take out the filler cap and replace it with a new one. That's what we have to do. The scanner is only going to give us a good indication as to where the problem is. It's not going to tell us the exact fix for it. So once you go inspect that system, so the EVAP system, once you inspect it and replace it, that engine light should turn off. If we get back in the car, we can actually find some pretty cool stuff with this scanner. So if we exit out, keep pressing escape, out, it'll bring us right back to the beginning. Yes, I'm sure, exit. Okay, if we go back through here, so OBD2, after it starts reading all the inputs and everything, it's gonna give us another option that's very sweet, especially if the car's on and running. Okay, cool, yep. Yes, erase. Okay, so if you look at that control module that we were looking at before, you can go down and see this, see live data. If you go to this, click it and enter it. If you turn your car on, you can read out almost all the inputs that your car is spitting out. So once it's done reading all this stuff, it'll show you all the live data that the computer is reading. So we go view data, complete data set. You can see everything here. Okay, so DTC count. So that means that's your trouble code count. You've got one. Right now your fuel system is in closed loop. You're looking at the, clo uh, the load of the engine, the engine coolant temperature, your short fuel trim, your long fuel trim, and a whole bunch of other stuff. RPM, vehicle speed, spark advance, intake air temperature, and honestly the list keeps going on and on. And it's really sweet. So okay, if, if I just click on say throttle position, See this? So right there, it's getting a steady readout of 21.6. Now, as soon as I touch the gas pedal, watch this. It moves, and you get to see all of that live. See that? And it's sweet, you can do this for basically any one of those sensors that this thing has on here. So say we wanna look at the oxygen sensor, bank one sensor two. You can take a look at its readings. And you can see how they differ. It's really sweet. This thing doesn't cost too much, but the amount of functions and everything that come with it are quite unbelievable. Runtime, mileage and distance, EVAP, warm ups, like there's so many different things. Cat temperature. This list goes on and on. So that's basically the gist of how to use one of these things. I'll be putting a link in the description for it. You guys can buy any kind of scanner. I've seen ones that work for 20 bucks, and I've also seen ones that work for like thousands of dollars. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get these things to work and get information out of your car. I'm pretty sure I spent something like 70 bucks on this tool, and it works great. I've used it on my, my dad's truck, on my car, my brother's Mini, my mom's Altima, and even my sister's Jeep. This thing works on basically any car, and it's awesome. You don't need to buy any extra modules or any control systems and updates for this thing. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, please post them down in the comments below, and I'd be happy to help. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.